For this video, I thought I would try something new. As you well know, my big reviews take a long time to make, so from time to time, I'm going to try my best to upload smaller videos to help satisfy your history buff's fix, focusing on historical films that are not as well known, but I highly recommend. And which better one to start off with than with the Admiral Roaring Currents? This is a Korean film that has some of the best naval battle sequences I have ever seen. I actually put it up there with Master and Commander, so you know it's going to be good. Set during the Imjin War in 1597, this was a conflict where recently united Japan invaded Korea. After a hundred years of civil war, the samurai resolved their differences and joined together under a campaign of conquest. Their invasion kicks off to a very good start, almost wiping out most of the Korean navy at the Battle of Chilkiolyang, allowing their troops to land on the peninsula unchallenged. As they march inland, a Japanese armada of more than 300 ships sails ahead to Hang Song, modern day Seoul. Their mission is to capture Korea's king and resupply their advancing armies. All that Korea has to oppose them are merely a dozen ships that manage to escape that disastrous defeat. They are quickly put under the command of the real life historical figure, Admiral Yi Sun Shin, who is probably one of the greatest admirals in world history. This guy would give Horatio Nelson a run for his money. He was that good. And it was this battle, the Battle of Myangyong, that would make him a legend in the annals of naval warfare. <laughs> Outnumbered 10 to 1, he would use his enemy's numbers against them by fighting the Myangyong Strait. Unknown to the Japanese, its waters conceal treacherous currents that regularly shifted throughout the day, making sailing extremely difficult, further constricted by the narrowness of the strait that served as a bottleneck. When the battle finally begins in the second half of the film, you can begin to understand why the Koreans were able to put up such a good fight. And the action sequences are just bloody spectacular. If you're as unfamiliar with Asian naval combat as I am, then this unique style of fighting might be something you've never seen before, which was certainly the case for me. I've only seen ships like this in pictures or museums, but they never really struck me as actual warships, but more like floating castles built for the purpose of transporting troops and boarding enemy vessels. So seeing them in action and just what they're capable of in this movie was a unique experience. The hand-to-hand -hand fighting is ruthlessly chaotic, that feels real and gritty. The film also does a great job of bringing you to the heart of the action in one minute, and in the next, a tactical view of the battlefield without it being too jarring. Now, I've watched a lot of historical war films, but my list of favourite ones usually stays the same. The Admiral Warring Currents doesn't quite make it for me, but it is one of the recent few to come close. The only negative thing I could say about it is that it can be pretty cheesy at times. Even though the whole movie is in Korean, its tone reminds me of something out of a Roland Emmerich movie. For example, the film often cuts to Korean civilians watching the battle on the shore, but instead of being bystanders, the film directly involves them in the action, whether it be to warn Yi Sun Shin about an incoming Japanese fire ship, or to rescue his flagship from getting sucked in a whirlpool by pulling on it with ropes from their little boat. But my favourite part is when they get inspired by Yi Sun Shin's bravery. Where are they going exactly? Are they going to swim to the Japanese ships? I mean, you have to admit, this is pretty silly. It's obvious that the film is trying to be very patriotic, and the civilians are supposed to symbolise the Korean people, making this battle a Korean victory just as much as Yi Sun Shin's. Taking that into consideration, it does make me doubt whether every battle sequence is 100% accurate, that they're probably exaggerated for dramatic effect. Our ship has been destroyed! All hands are lost! Now, admittedly, I cannot say for certain, since I haven't spent weeks researching this movie. This is just my initial impression based on what I've read so far. In the movie, the Koreans are kicking ass, but they're just holding on by the skin of their teeth suffering many casualties in the process, but based on my research, it looks like the real battle was a lot more one-sided. 
From what I was able to find, the Japanese lost 30 to 31 ships and suffered between 8,000 and 12,000 dead and wounded. The Koreans, on the other hand, didn't lose a single ship. Their casualties were only two dead and three wounded. If these numbers are true, then it might not translate well on film. If Yi Sun Shin is effortlessly kicking ass and the Japanese can't fight back, then it would suck all the tension out of the movie. But that's just my opinion. Like I said, this isn't a regular History Buffs review. This is simply me recommending a good historical film that I think you guys would enjoy. Perhaps someday I might return to the Admiral Roaring Currents and turn it into an official review. In the meantime, if you're looking for something fresh and exciting with everything a Hollywood blockbuster can offer, then definitely check this one out. For the rest of you who have seen it, what do you think? Is it as good as I'm saying it is, or am I talking rubbish? Let me know in the comments section. Anyway, thanks for watching History Buffs, and I'll see you again next time.